So I came up with an um, idea of doing this picnic, and I had some quick who, what, when, where, why. Um, quick anecdotal thing, uh, Pastor Bightley and his wife, I've actually known for oh Lord, over 25 years. Um, <laughs> I actually used to uh, self-babysit is the best way I could describe uh, Adam and Katie. We used to hang out together when, I don't know if you guys went on double dates or whatever you guys were doing, but their parents and my parents would go and do whatever and we would just hang out either at their house or our house. So it's, it's always nice coming back here and seeing the fight leaves. So, but um, some quick who what's and when where's. Um, who is invited to this picnic? Anyone who is an LCMS member and who is in the circuit tent, which would be you guys, obviously. Uh, when we are trying to do this is April 20th, with the possibility of the 27th as a rainout date. Uh, Pastor Faila did inform me that you guys are doing the uh, yard sale on the 27th, so obviously if it rains out, it would be sad to miss you guys, but if possible, coming to the 20th, it would be great. The time is from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The What we're going to do is a lot of breaking bread, physically and metaphorically. Uh, 
spending time together playing games. Um, going to be going, doing some fun games like volleyball, horseshoes, cornhole. Uh, for the kids, I have some fun things lined up, some face painting, uh, sack races, three-legged race, or maybe an egg on spoon race. Um, where we're trying to do this is currently we're going to try and do the Harry Daniel Park down in Chesterfield, shelters four and five, which is on the back end. They have a nice open field for us to be able to do fun activities, stuff like that. Um, why we're doing this, like I said, is to break down the walls, to meet new people, and also I challenge people to get to know each other. Um, I myself may get a challenge when I come to visit these different churches to meet people I haven't met before or to try and, you know, I guess, I don't want to say men, but I guess re uh, reaffirm relationships. So. Um, RSVP date is going to be March 31st, which is Easter. Uh, I'm going to be getting in contact with you guys by giving you my personal email so that you guys can let me know if you guys are interested in coming. One final tidbit is to do a fun little thing is we're doing different shirts. Everybody wears a different shirt from a different church. That way it gives you a nice little icebreaker. So being this is my event, I get to pick the colors. And I went with Bethlehem for blue because that's my favorite color. Uh, Trandy is going to be in green. Uh, Saint, uh, no, uh, Grace is in purple. And I was going to do St. Paul for white. Um, if you guys have any other suggestions, by all means, I was told because I gave Grace black, thought that would be a good one, an easy one. And I got a lot of pushback on that. They wanted purple. So I was like, all right, you know purple. So if you guys have a different color, by all means, let me know. But if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be here after service. Thank you. And thank you. And I do remember those double dates, and there was a lot of gnashing of teeth and things, but, but it turned out great. It, you, you did have a lot more hair back then, as I remember. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing, isn't it? Uh, but it's good to have you with us, and we do look forward to the picnic. Um, other announcements for this morning. Just a reminder that we do have Ash Wednesday worship this Wednesday, 7 p.m. here at the church. Um, next Saturday at 11 a.m. is Mark Sauer's funeral. Um, so anyone who can be here for that, we certainly would encourage that. Deb, do you still need food help? So if you can help in any way, food or setting up, serving, please talk to Deb Toth today. Uh, we do have the pancake luncheon right after church today so everyone just please plan to stay even if you haven't signed up please plan to stay um, and you can talk to Deb during that time I'm sure there are Lenten devotionals available in the narthex if you haven't picked one up there's a couple of different kinds pick one up for yourself um, take some to hand out to friends um, it, it's a good help during the Lenten season anything else we need to share this morning Paul. Oh. So I'm getting ready to go to Florida for a month. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll visit him on six Sunday. Anyhow, uh, I won't be here to bug you about the Bible Arc. It's the whole month of March. But right after I get back, we're really close to the yard sale. So I need you guys to get your bottles together, bring them in here, see Carol, get candy. Easter's coming up. Right after Easter, you can get candy in the deal. Get your candy and bring it in for the bottle. Right, Carol? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's about it. Well, hold on. The 1st of March, I won't be back till about the 5th or 6th of April. So we got to be ready for the yard. Or toys, too. Little toys. You want toys or not? Oh, yeah. Little, if, you, if you see, sometimes you go to big day, they have a whole thing of these little like matchbox cars and stuff like that. And the kids, we put those in the bottle and mix it all up. And you gotta have stuff for the girls too, but whatever. You figure out, you know, all that stuff. They like the little boxes of raisins. There's a lot of things you can get. You see a deal. I go down to the Devil's Mall down here in Sanson. At times they have lots of candy down there at a really good price. But it has to be individually wrapped candy. You can't put this thing in and it's not individually wrapped. So if y'all 
do that while I'm in Florida, I'll be very appreciative. Thank you. All right, have fun in Florida, and we will certainly be hard at work while you're away. Anything else to share today? If not, it's a, just a reminder also that tomorrow we are starting a new Monday Bible study at 1.30, the study of Mormons, uh, looking at who they are, where they came from, the teachings and things like that. Uh, and it's developed, the study is developed by Lutheran Hour Ministry, so it always has uh, a, an angle to it of how do you reach out to someone uh, who comes from that way of thinking. Uh, so come out and be a part of that if you would, uh, if you have time and are available. As we move into worship, today is Transfiguration Sunday, the day that we remember how Jesus, along with Peter, James, and John, ascended the Mount of Transfiguration and saw Jesus in, in all of his heavenly glory. What a wonderful vision that was. As we think about that today, we stand to sing our opening hymn. <laughs> Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain. The Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He sits in the throne of the earth. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the people. Let them praise your great and awesome name. O the King in his might loves justice. He has silent charity. He has many justice and righteousness in the air. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. O Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain. The Lord our God is holy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in His glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say. For they were terrified, and a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen, until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I invite any children who are here to come forward for a children's message. You want to slide up? You can come up here a little bit if you want to. How's everybody this morning? Good. Anyone staying for pancakes today? <laughs> Anyone like pancakes? I like pancakes. Double pancakes for Andy. Okay. <laughs> Triple. Okay. All right. Well, who likes quizzes? Who likes tests? Who likes spelling? Who can spell transfiguration? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doing great. You got it. Congratulations. Good job. But you have to say the word at the end or it doesn't count. Go ahead. Transfiguration. There you go. Good job. That's a lot of letters to remember in a row. So transfiguration is what today is called Transfiguration Sunday. What does transfiguration mean? Okay. To transform into something. Remember, anyone ever have toys called Transformers? Those might not be around so much anymore. Do you like Transformers? What, what do Transformers do? They turn into bad guys. Okay. But they're, they're one thing. And then they turn into something else, right? It might turn into a car, or the bad guys, or, or whatever it is. But it's something that turns into something else. And that's really what it's talking about with Jesus today. We, we've been seeing Jesus and hearing about Jesus, and he's a man who's doing all sorts of great things. But today, on Transfiguration Sunday, high on top of the mountain, he shows himself for who he fully is, and that is the very Son of God, come to save us. And we see the glory of God shining, and they, they find it almost impossible to describe what he looked like. He was bleached more than anyone could possibly bleach something to make it white. Other writers said that, you know, he shone and that, that it was just amazing what was happening. And it was totally, really undescribable. But what he was showing was, he's more than just a man. He's actually the very Son of God who's come into the world. And why is he here? To, to save us from sin. That's exactly right. He's come to save us. And that's what he's all about. So high atop that mountain, Jesus' glory shone, and it was amazing. We 
has come to save us. He's headed to the cross in order that he can suffer and die and then rise again as our Savior. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for all the wonderful gifts that you give. Thank you especially for coming into the world, showing your glory and helping us to know that it is indeed you who's come to save us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for coming up. I'll see you for pancakes. chapter 9, and I share with you these words. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Transfiguration Sunday, and, and here in the Lutheran Church, Transfiguration Sunday is always the last Sunday of the Epiphany season. We've been seeing in, in the Epiphany season, and asking the question, who are you, Jesus? And each week we've seen something a, a little bit different to help us understand fully who this, this what appears to be a man, a, a rabbi, a teacher in Judaism, who he is. And he's come into the world revealing himself as he heals the sick, as the lame walk. He comes with amazing teaching power and authority that's just different than anyone else has had and people are, are scratching their head and saying who is this that can can do these things evil spirits listen to him and he commands them to come out and they do and people are just amazed who are you jesus who are you that are that's doing these things and today, as you might think, you know, during the Epiphany season, you've kind of been going up the mountain. And today you're at the mountain top. Here is Jesus, along with Peter, James, and John, that inner circle of his disciples. And while they're up there on top of the mountain, Jesus is transfigured before them. But of course, Peter, James, and John, being the guys that they were, 
were usually half asleep at the most important times, just as, as I probably would be as well. They were exhausted, they were tired, they were, were doing the Lord's work, and here they are now at the top of the mountain, and Jesus is praying, and they're falling asleep. When they wake up, and they look, there's Jesus, and he's talking with Moses and Elijah. And Jesus doesn't look like Jesus had looked. He's transfigured. He's changed. He's showing forth the very glory of God that we're, we're told other places in Scripture that Jesus had, had hidden. He always was God from eternity. He took on human flesh and he hid the very glory that he deserved. But this one day, during his earthly ministry, he allows it to shine. And he allows Peter, James, and John to see that glory. And then a bright cloud, it says, envelops them. And the very voice of God, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. But what I find interesting with this text is it's certainly showing us clearly Jesus is the very Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity in the flesh come to save us. But it's just a few verses before Jesus is asking the question of his disciples, who do people say that I am? And that's really the question worth being asked in Epiphany. Who do you say that Jesus is? We can go to my, or one of my favorite bumper stickers. I don't see it so much anymore, but Jesus is my co-pilot. Is that who Jesus is? Is he your co-pilot? A lot of people like to think that, but what does that say about Jesus if he's your co-pilot? Y'all have everything under control, right? You've got it in hand. And in the outside, slim possibility that anything should go wrong, well, there's this guy next to me. I guess he'd be over here, right? He's next to me. And he'll take over. But I'll handle this. Anyone ever have any troubles in your life? Any difficulties along the way? Things that maybe even seem insurmountable at times? A heap of grief that was laid on you? Got it all under control. Probably not. The good news is Jesus has it under control. And Jesus is not just a co-pilot, but isn't the higher ranking person on any given plane usually the pilot? Wouldn't we want him to be the one who's flying the plane for us? Who are you, Jesus? You are the one who has things under control. You heal the sick, the lame walk, you teach with authority, you do amazing things, and in the midst of the troubles of my life, you're right there, and you've got it under control. It doesn't mean the problems are gone and the troubles are all taken away. It just means you have it under control. And I know my hope is in you. And my assurance is in you, and I'm going to be okay through all of this. Who are you, Jesus? You are the very Son of God. Come into the, into the world to save us. Who are you, Jesus? Jesus is a role model. We're going to be talking about Mormonism in our Monday Bible study, and that is really where the Mormons would put Jesus. You're a role model. All I need to do is do the things that, that you did, Jesus. You can all do that, right? Well, the men challenged me. I was telling some folks, the men challenged me this morning. They had two pieces of bacon and five pancakes, they said. They said, Pastor, make enough for everyone. 
Well, y'all are going to go hungry if you're depending on me today to make those pancakes and the bacon. The reality is there are things that only God himself can do. There are things that only God can accomplish on our behalf. Jesus can do those miracles. We can't. But we can hear his word. We can hear his promises. And we can receive his assurance. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And Jesus didn't just say, come and do the things that I did and you're going to be okay. He said things like, I forgive you. And he did, said things like, today you will be with me in paradise. He said, it is finished. He's the one who can go to the cross. He's the one who can suffer and die and rise again. He's the one who can accomplish our salvation. He isn't a role model. Yes, he is in part, but he isn't a role model in the sense that if we just do what Jesus did, we're going to be okay. But that's what the world sometimes will tell you. And that's the misleading ideas that we have is, is our world will tell us in part things about God, things about Jesus. And that's exactly what Satan was doing with Eve and Adam in the garden. A little bit of truth in there that takes a wrong turn and misleads us with Satan's hope that it will lead us into condemnation and being lost eternally. But Jesus came in order that we would be saved. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have life eternal. Yeah. That's the gift that he came to bestow on us. And that's what we've been seeing revealed throughout the Epiphany season. Jesus, the Son of God himself, come into our world to accomplish our salvation. And God the Father says, listen to him. Hear his word. That's why we live a life of daily repentance and faith. We can't do the things that Jesus did. We can't accomplish the things that Jesus did. And we're all sinners. We've all fallen short. And on our own, we are lost eternally. But thanks be to God, Jesus has come into our world. Hear his word. Hear his voice. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. And the kind of rest that he gives is a rest we can't receive anywhere else. The guilt of our sins is taken away. The assurance of life eternal with our Lord is freely given to all who will believe, to all who will call upon his name. It's right there for us. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Don't listen to the voices of the world. Don't listen and be misled. Hear God's word. Take it in. Receive it. And know the gifts and promises that Jesus has for you. For in him is forgiveness. And in him is life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we rise to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, in addition to those who are listed in your worship folder, we pray for Patrick Herndon, son of Rosetta Herndon. Um, he has been hospitalized recently. He is now in hospice care, hopefully returning home today. Um, but from what the family is being told, that they're expecting his life, to earthly life anyway, to continue for weeks, probably not months. We also pray for Kim Harris, niece of the Roses. Uh, she is suffering with cancer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the eyes to see, ears to hear, and faith to believe Christ is the glory of the Father who has accomplished salvation by fulfilling the law and the prophets for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For the church, where the glory of God shines through the voice of his word and by the sacraments of Christ, and for our life together in the unity of this word, believed and this gospel proclaimed, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the pastors who preach the glory of the cross and the church workers who serve us in Christ's name, and for those preparing for church work, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faded glory of the world, of nations in conflict, of victims of violence and hate, and of the inequities of our broken world, and for those who serve us on every level of government, especially for President Biden and Governor Youngkin, Lord, in your mercy. For those afflicted in mind or body, those bearing the pain of grief or loss, and for the dying, Especially this day, we pray for Christine, Kim, Mark, Kevin, Butch, for Patricia, Patrick, Scott, Tammy, Buddy, Meredith, and Bill. For Cheyenne, Diane, Jean, Liz, Diane, Doris, Lewis, Helen, Terry, Ruth, Nancy, Paul, Mary, Faye. For Frank and Gwen, Jackson, Eleanor, Avery, Bill, Anita, Carter, and Ryan. For Faye, Eleanor, Sydney, Todd, Cindy, Cindy, Thelma, Lina, Mickey, and Sherry. For Tommy, Chris, Tony, Elsie, Michelle, April, Jeff, Carol, Lucille, Paul, Billy, Tammy, and Christy. And for comfort, peace, healing, and faith to sustain them in their trouble. Lord, in your mercy. For our wisdom in the face of falsehood, our strength in the face of temptation and our courage in the face of threat and persecution. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For faithful worship, where Christ and his gifts are the center of why we gather and all we do, and for grace to receive his gifts with faith and repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For those who serve as in our military and police, faithfully looking out for our well-being and safety each day. We pray especially for Troy, Brandon, Andrew, Jeremy, Jordan, Kyle, Garrett, Meredith, Vic Jr., and for Mike. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our missionaries and international ministries, that you would be with them wherever they might be, that you would empower the proclamation of the gospel, and that you would lead people to listen and believe. Be with Pastor Matt Wood and family, and Pastor Gustavo Maita and family especially. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our health care workers, that you would be with them as, as they look out for us, caring for our health care and helping us to be restored. We pray especially that you would be with Hannah, Ashley, Tammy, Sarah, Deborah, Kyle, Brittany, Amy, Samantha, and Tia. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, 
through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection and with all the faithful look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Saying, 
take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which has been poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Take and eat the true body, given for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the true blood shed for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Take and drink the true blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on in the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord. Savior Jesus Christ, give it for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Give it for you. Take and eat. The true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Give it for you.
table. And the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you. Take and eat. The true body given for you. Please rise. through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And as we prepare to move for a luncheon, we offer a prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for caring for us and for all of our needs. Lord, we thank you for the food that you're setting before us, all the hands that have prepared it. We pray that you would use this as a blessing to us, a time of fellowship to grow closer to one another, and a time especially to remember you as the one who has come into our world for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor.